The purpose of the Dakota Family Way of Life alcohol prevention program called Takoja Nuichiapi, giving life to the grandchildren, is to help youth and their parents learn about ways to live a life free of alcohol and drug abuse. This program is built upon the knowledge, counsel, and advice of respected Dakota, Lakota, and Nakota elders and leaders in your communities. We have a culture that is rich and beautiful. It contains great wisdom and guidance for all Dakota children and families. One of the most important concepts you will learn is the principle of Wuchoizani, the good way of life. The good way of life, according to our elders, involves living free of substance abuse, understanding our identity and family roles, learning about our cultural tradition and heritage, gaining an appreciation for our spiritual principles, treating others with respect, and choosing to live according to our basic values. The most powerful message revolves around the importance of family, as it is the most central component to life. Our elders and spiritual leaders believe the answers to life's challenges, especially the challenges of staying away from drugs and alcohol, lie within our families and through understanding our family's place within our culture and heritage. Now let's listen as some of our elders talk about these principles of Wichozani, the good way of life. By far the most consistent and overwhelming theme related to living the good way of life involves family. Family is the most important thing to me. A most important way of life is a whole family that is healthy, I mean emotionally, drug and alcohol free. Then we can respect how every family member is living. Kinship is not only mother, father, and children, it is extended family looking out for them too. That cohesiveness, being together, and learning. Speaking about being good relatives, one elder said we need to be more interdependent, more connected with other people so that other people can be our resources. You have to be good relatives, somebody that helps other people at times in a healthy way. A good away life is um, being uh, majority drug and alcohol free, um, spirituality, um, communication with family members, knowing who your family, your relative is, um, even if it's going down through history of generations of where, uh, who you are, where you come from. Um, your traditions, your culture. I think for me a good way of life is just being really um, centered um, both spiritually and um, just being a good person on a daily basis, keeping that in your, in your mind and doing what, what's right for the people and trying to leave a legacy for the children. One elder said that culture should be your backbone. The good way of life can be found within your culture. Another elder spoke of challenges she was having with her daughter and that it wasn't until she started telling her Lakota stories about Lakota values that she started listening and changing her behaviors. Another spoke about how some tribal schools are doing a great job reviving cultural values and traditions, including things like honesty and respect by placing them on posters and signs. One value that comes through so strong is to do everything in your life with a good heart, to be honest, straightforward, and direct about things, not to do things in a double or two-minded way. I knew that she showed love to me by the gloves she knit for me so that my hands wouldn't be cold. That meant more than any words she could have ever said. One elder spoke the value of industriousness. He said that it was sorely missing and that he was worried about it for his grandchildren. He said he would like some of the older ladies especially to teach that. They were the ones that would instill industriousness in the kids and the grandchildren. Another important value is taught by our elders is balance. Dennis tells a lesson of his grandfather taught him and his team of the horses named Babe and Lady. One was the gelding, the other was the mare. He said their horses are just like a marriage of a man and a woman. If both work and pull evenly, you can get a lot of things done. If one doesn't want to go, you won't accomplish anything. So I imagine that he was telling me that there's a balance, you know, men and women, day and night. It's got to balance out or else it is lopsided. But I was taught when I was young, I was fortunate to have my father. Um, I have three mothers. 
and my grandmother and grandfather. What they told me or what they taught me is, um, as long as you know it's right in your heart, but you have to be honest with yourself. If there's, if there's a doubt in something you're doing, then there must be something that feels wrong to make you hesitate or um, <clears throat> if it feels right in your heart, then you know, it, must, it must be okay. It is not possible to live a good way of life in the true Lakota Dakota tradition without respect. I value at number one, respect for my elders. The most important thing I learned was kinship values, respect, and learning to listen to your parents and grandparents. And main and most purpose is telling each other that they love each other. There's not enough of that said within the family members. A lot of that's not taught. And also um, a good thing as much as a hug, you know, going out in the day before you reach your day or um, good compliments, just simple little things like that can mean the world to a lot of younger people and older people. Obviously an important aspect of family involves parents and parenting. One elder said that as a child, we were watching, they were our role models. Parenting skills are really important because our mothers and fathers were our teachers and those things go from generation to generation. Our elders have told us that we have to educate our children. One elder said, schooling is the most valuable thing I think a person needs. Another said, if we don't have our kids educated and we don't have our kids understanding that capitalism is the real world, then we're not making much headway. Many elders speak about the importance of gaining a worth ethic, of working for what you have and not accepting handouts. One elder said, everything we have, we work for. You have to work to survive and that's all we have to teach our children. Well, a good way of life is, is being, being with your family, being always there, taking care of your family, both man and woman, taking care of your children and telling them the rights and wrongs. And then all of that is being, it's just kind of separating, you know. And that's where our reservations are failing. There isn't one family that's not touched by alcoholism and and now a lot of drug abuse well on, on any reservation it's a lot of high a lot of high crime um, breakup of families uh, no closeness um, uh, lack of education uh, the homelessness um, the alcohol and drugs brings in um, a lot of difficulties um, um, that put people into the prison system um, uh, majority of our kids uh, starting at a younger age um, with the chemicals um, even into um, as low as five years old on um, huffing. It's just taken completely everything away from our children. It's taken away their, um, I see it as taking away their, um, their dreams for a future and as we believe that our children are sacred and what they learn from our teachings the, that will help them become leaders for our tribe. But the alcohol and drugs <clears throat> I feel are taking this away from them. It goes against um, <clears throat> different traditional values that we hold and it's, it's like totally opposite of what um, we as Dakota people expect or how we are expected to live. It's, it's devastating. Um, I had one mother, as family, family um, counselor, I had one mother tell me that she was home all the time, but she didn't know that uh, because she was drinking at home, she still wasn't there for her children emotionally, physically, spiritually, mentally. She wasn't providing the meals. Mothers and <coughs> In the traditional uh, Dakota world, are are very sacred because they bring forth life. I, what I tried to teach them, what was taught to me, was that the mother is sacred because she is like the teepee. She's like the dwelling, and she, that's where she brings forth life. The womb of the mother is sacred. The womb of the woman is sacred, and the old traditional way of thinking is you don't let just anybody or anything go there 
um, because you compare it to when your teepee is set up and the fire is inside, you have children inside, the mother is like the fire of the home. She keeps it going. She keeps the warmth there. She's the center of that home. The teepee is like the woman's body because that's where bringing forth of life takes place and the nurturing and, and the protection. And so we have a woman's body being compared to the home because that's where the children are. So likewise, you don't let just any stranger come into your home, traditionally thinking, as, as far as, you know, just um, in off the street and out again because there's children there. And the children are sacred and they need to be protected. And one of our words for children is wakanja, which is um, a reference to their sacredness. Um, waka means holy or sacred and or mysterious. Traditionally, we didn't have uh, all of the kind of abuse and physical abuse and you know beating kids up and so on and so forth. Many elders said that parents in this next generation need to be more affectionate. One elder told of his son who was an elementary school teacher who had a group of kids that would frequently come up and ask him for hugs. He could tell there was something missing at home. In most situations, the mother is always present, but they need the father to balance that out. Um, boys, because they need to know what being a man is, and a mother can only teach that. So far, and only from a woman's point of view, and girls need that. <clears throat> I noticed with girls, I don't have fathers in their lives. They choose, they usually choose the wrong, or make the wrong decisions when they're older. They live a lifestyle always looking for acceptance from a male and, you know, do things they regret later on. Fathers are an important part of our parenting. Many elders discuss the need for fathers to step up to the plate and be an active part of their children's lives. One elder said, I want our men to get up, to get together, and teach each other to reinforce each other as who they are as fathers and men. If fathers are more involved, they um, portray that healthy family activity type, type of thing where there's not drinking involved because I think a lot of um, families on the reservation don't have that. My father was always really involved. He wasn't afraid to go to my conferences and things like that. And then also just setting up um, activities for us to do. You know, we'd, he'd play soccer with us and things like that and just showing camping and things like that. So. My father was a positive role model to me and that meant that he grew up in, in the church and going to school and stuff, he, um, he taught me that um, about leadership skills. He showed me a lot of affection and by, by, um, by, by encouraging me, praising me, loving me, um, teaching me. He taught me how to uh, chop wood, how to start a fire. And teaching is really important you know, in a, in a father role. So I learned all these leadership skills from him, how to treat people, how to listen to them. And I'm really thankful for my father for being there for me. Another important value is gratitude. One elder spoke of hearing other elders' prayers that were always filled with thankfulness. They had the spirit of gratitude. She said as a child, I think there has to be a revival of gratefulness. If you're not taught to experience gratefulness from early on, all that stuff don't make no beans. If you don't have gratefulness, you can't be grateful. You have relatives. You can't be grateful that you know how to tell the truth, to welcome it. Gratefulness is welcoming. Even when bad things happen, there is a lesson in there that we should be grateful for because it is character building. We can't even hear the Spirit talk to us if we don't have gratefulness in our heart. I think um, by being a role model, um you know, you always hear that old saying is, um, walk your talk. Um, and then depending on how people view you as a role model. Um, and if you know people look up to you as a role model, not to, um, how would you say it, exploit it in, um, in, in, in a negative manner. Um, I would say exploit it in a positive manner. And um, especially if you have a story behind, as far as you being a role model, to share that story with, with people who may be having um, obstacles to know that um, 
um, you can do it, you know, and, and, and that um, there is a different way of life. And what I talked about fevers, you know, finding, reaching out and, and listening to role models and understand that, hey, you know, I'm not alone, somebody understands. And, 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 and you have to believe that, you know. But if you dwell on um, whatever obstacles you're going through, you're going to stay there. You know, you're not going to overcome them. You're going to continue to be down, this and that, because you know, need to find some self-worth or add some self-worth or self-esteem um, to your life. You know, and the only way you can do that is, is, is by listening to people and um, understanding that, hey, you know, they were there before too, so they understand, you know. You have to believe that. You have to have a positive, positive outlook on life. But you also have to share that with people to help them understand that you, that they can too also overcome whatever they may be struggling with or um, life challenges they may have, you know. Spirituality is one of the most important aspects of the American Indian life. Much of our understanding of who we are and what we should be doing comes from a foundation built on a relationship with our Creator. Many elders spoke about how important it is to teach children about the Creator, the creation story, prayer, and proper respect and relationship with all other people. One elder spoke about how she was helping her grandchildren with their spirituality because she saw it as the key to living a drug-free lifestyle. She emphasized that it did not matter whether it was traditional Christianity or a combination of the two. A value that our community is missing is spirituality. For me, I know that after I was 18 years till my 30s, I didn't have a spiritual life. I, st I start learning then about values again, the basics of respect. So when you have respect for yourself, you have it for others, but most of all you have it for the Creator, the higher power. Hear the words of our children. The first utmost thing taught to us was to pray together. We grew up learning to come to church and yet to respect our traditional religion, our traditional way of life. The thing that really stands out in my mind is religion. I was brought up that way. There are lots of times we walk to church and would haul a pot of soup and bread wrapped in a towel. My grandma always taught us to have the awareness of God, Lakota God, and that one that created us, who puts food on our table every day. We need to have a reference point of knowing where you fit in the cosmos, to learn to walk humbly on the earth, and to be in sync with those things. Without prayer, I don't think I could handle it. I strongly believe our children need to have a strong spiritual foundation and know who they are so they can love themselves and not turn to something else negative like drugs and alcohol. I see um, no family ties and our, our children are the ones who are suffering from it. And I, um, our Dakota Way of Life program I believe is a good program because that I see that as challenging to the all the negativity and oppression and that's coming from the alcohol and drugs at Crow Creek. You've just experienced a mere glimpse at the many important concepts our community's elders and leaders understand about what is important to live the good way of life. You have heard the words of Wichozani, the good way of life. However, you will not benefit from them until you heed them, that is, until you have a chance to apply them in your life and commit to following them. Pidamaye, thank you for your time. We look forward to working with you. Mitaku yewansi.